Okay, we're on to video seven. Hopefully this is our final uh, video in the the series of installing DSFW. So we're back to verifying our install. Uh, again, you don't have to do this export path if you just restart the server. You don't have to reload uh, the services. You can do an NDS stat to make sure e directories up. Or if you do the the XAD CNTRL validate, you will see that the e directories up. We had done that earlier right there as you can see again uh, e directory right here is up our tree name bind is running and then each service from there on down uh, specifically you know uh, RPC name caching Kerberos are are actually domain services daemon the XAD daemon is running uh, NetBIOS, WinBind, Samba SSH and rsync are something that were are new with SP2. Uh, this is for the allowing the synchronization of your sys file. If you're not familiar with that, var op novel xad sys file. All users have to have access to your sys file. The, this is where your GPO is is at. Is, is located in inside the sysfall uh, if you you know you all users have to have access to the GPO to determine you know the setup of their workstations uh, and and this to get them their workstations all all configured their if you have their password policy stored in the GPO their password policies all that is is uh, part of this uh, the sysfall here so that's why those were were implemented your First domain controller will be the one that is written to uh, the sysfall if you make changes in your GPO. ADCs or additional domain controllers, those will be replicated too. So it's a, a master read-only type of a setup as far as the sysfall goes. All right, so we, again, getting back to our validating our install of DSFW. If you remember right, we searched on this A1 user for supplemental credentials and SAM account name. Here's our SAM account name. Here's the supplemental credentials. If we look at B, a user in the B container or anywhere below, so B1, we'll see that only a SAM account name is listed there. We don't have supplemental credentials. Again, re if you remember, we assigned our, I assigned the password policy after the creation and setting of the passwords of the users in that uh, partition. So let, let me go and take a look, show you again our password policy. Uh, this sets up our common pro proxy policy. This is for that pr specific proxy user that, that is added. So anyway, here, here we go. We have our, our two password policies. Again, nothing is set up on C. And then we'll show you uh, something as far as that, that goes. So. So B, users in B will not be able to authenticate into the domain at this time unless you just have them log in with their Novell client. They have NMAS enabled on there it, that will set the, the password just logging in. Another option is to do this. NDS login cn equals b1 dot ou equals b dot o equals Novell. This is a NDS login, so we're using the NDS syntax. We log in. We search again on this user, and we see supplemental credentials have been created for this user. So all it takes is a login once you have a password policy assigned to get that, that user to uh, be able to um, authenticate into DSFW. Uh, let me show you something else. Uh, if remember, I talked a little bit about uh, using the DCs. Let's, so this user is in B1 slash B and then say we do a DC equals DSFW comma DC equals Novell comma DC equals com. Now again we do not have this object and this object and the Novell object is not a domain object it is an O object. But with DSFW and this specific type of LDAP search we're able to search uh, using a DC. Again, this is the searching within the domain. The documentation will talk about, uh, and there's also a TIT talking about, the 
different LDAP ports. You have three sets of LDAP ports with the SFW. You have your regular standard 389.636. Those are specific to the domain, searching within that domain. So it, since these containers are in the domain, all you can search is in this domain. You have the global catalog ports, the 32, um, I can't think of the 3269 or some, some, anyway, I can't think of the actual numbers, but you have the global catalog ports, which searches your entire forest. So if we had another domain here, or we created a child domain here, the global catalog would allow to search all of your forest. So if we say E was not a domain at all, nowhere near it, not part of anything, would not be able to search E. The only way you could do that is using the E directory LDAP ports, and that is, th those are assigned 1389 and 1636. So a 1 is added to the standard LDAP ports. So if you have an application that needs to use uh, uh, the DSFW for LDAP authentication for the, the E directory, and you know that user does not exist in the domain but exists in the directory somewhere else in the e-directory, use the 1389.1636. So again, if we, if we uh, look at our C user, only SAM account name, we do not have a password policy assigned there. So if we do an NDS login for c1.c.novell, We've logged in. You, you, you can do a CN. Or you don't have to do a CN. It, it, it's up to you. Different syntax. Again, it does not uh, create the supplemental credentials. Therefore, we'll not be able to log into DSFW. Or log in. Yes, log in from a workstation with DSFW. Still be able to log in with eDirectory, with your eDirectory credentials. NCP still works fine. It's just uh, DSFW specific. So there's this is a good uh, test here. SAM account name and supplemental credentials. Uh, I would also do a search on just for the specific users. The resolve.conf and the host file, we checked those before. We should be good. NS lookup, this is making sure you're, you can uh, resolve your domain. NS lookup server, to see what server we're using. We can type just NS lookup and go into the prompt for NS lookup or do a specific command. We can see the server, the name, the address. It's, it resolves. Also, our provisioning tool. If we do this, dsfw.novell.com, way to verify that domain is up and running. Another thing is with this, this tool right here. Before you run it, let's just do a K-list. We have no tickets created. We need to create a ticket for administrator. You can do k administrator or you can do a k administrator at in your do domain name. Should return to a prompt. Uh, if you get an error, you got a problem. <laughs> k list. Now we see our ticket granting ticket. Let's do the, this search. We see that it's running. Another or another uh, run this uh, uh, RPC client. Another this is doing by NetBIOS. Run that running our domain is in good shape this is a good starting point if you're troubleshooting DSFW just to make sure everything is is running if you get an error in one of these two pieces re issue another ticket ultimately if you can join a workstation to the domain that means it's definitely up and running and, and working for you if you're having a problem start here make sure that everything is up running you can resolve the the domain name there's no conflicts all right that concludes our series of installing DSFW. Uh, we'll do a video on joining a workstation to domain and some other work videos on different configurations as far as DNS and, and uh, setting up trust, different things along that line. So I hope you enjoyed this series and uh, it will help you with DSFW with your installs and just a, a fundamental understanding of, of DSFW. Thank you.